Hello everyone. First of all, I want to thank everyone for being here and for watching my presentation. I want to thank the International Microorganism Day for allowing me to show you this presentation, even though I cannot do it personally. If you have any questions after the presentation, please feel free to send me an email. I will answer them as soon as I am online. My name is Maria Pinto. I am a PhD student at the University of Vienna. My supervisor is Professor Gerhard Handel, and I work specifically in the microbial oceanography group at the Department of Functional and Evolutionary Ecology. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the world of bacteria that live, live associated to plastic debris in the ocean, which was also the majority of my PhD project. First of all, what is plastic? Plastic is pretty much any synthetic or semi-synthetic organic compound that can be molded and shaped into solid objects. Here you see a wide variety of plastics or things that are made of plastic that we use in our everyday lives. There are several different types of plastic. You have probably seen these symbols in some of the plastic materials you use in your every day. And this simply means that they have different chemical structures. So the main polymer has, is, has a different molecular structure for, as you can see here. These are the most common plastics used and produced worldwide the most pro uh, common being polypropylene and low density and high density polyethylene. These are the most produced plastics. They are usually the ones that are found mostly in polluted areas. And they are also the ones that are mostly found at the surface of the ocean. Not only because they are the most produced and therefore the ones that are usually more wasted, but they are also the plastics that are the most buoyant. Other plastics are, for let, some of them are denser, so they end up sinking to deeper layers of the ocean, and some of them even reach the sediments of the deep ocean. Because of the durability, their durability and their ease of manufacture, low prices, plastic production has seen a very steep and almost exponential increase since the 1950s until today. And this seems, this growth seems to continue on until 2020. So it is not uh, unreasonable to assume that the amount of plastic entering the ocean is also increasing year by year. In 2015, John Beck et al. tried to estimate how much plastic had entered the ocean in the year of 2010, and they estimated that out of the 270 million metric tons of produced plastic in that year, 8 million entered the ocean. And they also estimated that around between 6,350 and 245,000 metric tons of plastic are, were already in the ocean by that year. These estimates, as you see, this is a very large, rate, big range, and these estimates are very difficult, and therefore, and some, peop, some even suggest that these estimates in this study are relative, are conservative, so it could be that there's even more plastic than it's said here. But nevertheless, it is quite a large amount already. So what are the impact of plastics in the ocean? Well, usually the first thing we think about and the uh, things that most people know or think about when we talk about the impact of plastic in marine ecosystems is the direct physical impact on organisms. However, there are other more invisible potential threats or impacts that we are not so much aware about. For example, the release of additives into the seawater. Additives are compounds that are added during the manufacturing process to the plastics to increase their performance, their durability, uh, to, uh, their, uh, to be more resistant to biodegradation. And we know that they can be leached from the plastic to the surrounding environment, including seawater. And these, for example, here are just some examples of types of additives that can be added to the plastics. 
We also know that plastics can absorb uh, persistent organic pollutants, for example, fertilizers that are already in the seawater. And because plastic is so durable and they, are, they might transport these POPs across long distances, and the main focus of today's presentation, we also know that they are a surface for bacteria and other organisms to colonize. Of course, anything that is on the plastic and that is consumed by organisms at any point can be then transferred throughout the food webs. But okay, so let's now talk about the main focus of this presentation, which is the microorganisms that live attached to plastic. So what this, this is called a biofilm and a biofilm is this kind of structure that forms on surface. A, Bacteria and other uh, microorganisms create this sort of layer on top of surfaces. Here, for example, this is a photo I took with a scan electron microscope from a piece of plastic that I collected in the northern Adriatic. Here you can still see a bit of the plastic and all this fluffy structure is the biofilm and you can even see some diatoms, so some cells embedded in this kind of mesh and a biofilm is basically an assemblage of microorganisms that attach to each other and via something called EPS which is an exo uh, extracellular polymeric matrix I'm sorry and they it's a kind of a glue that allows them to attach to each other and attach to surfaces and we do know that they attach to plastics in the ocean just to give you an idea how this works. So there are around 1 million bacteria per milliliter of sea, surface seawater in around the world. This is an average estimate. And some of these bacteria, like when they encounter surfaces, plastic for example, they like to attach to the surface. Being attached to a surface and cr cr creating a biofilm can provide a lot of advantages to the microorganisms they can have easier nutrient availability, uh, protection against uh, harmful environment, it, it, easier to exchange gene, favorable genes between them, and uh, other, uh, there's other advantages. So biofilms are, for many organisms, uh, very advantageous. Living in a biofilm is, for many organisms, an uh, advantageous way lifestyle. And so some of them from these 1 million bacteria per milliliter like to attach to the surface, then they create this EPS that I was talking to you about before, which is this sort of glue that allows them to attach to each other and to the surface. They continue dividing. Then there's new players coming in, predators, viruses, organic matter, and the biofilm continues developing. Sometimes there's or some organisms that leave, some, then sometimes there's whole chunks, whole chunks of the biofilm that detach. There's other organisms that uh, come to the biofilm. So it's uh, while it is relatively stable in comparison to the surrounding seawater, it is still a habitat that is in, developing and, and, and kind of changes over time depending on which stage of the development we are we are or the biofilm is in 2013 uh zettler et al published the first study that used molecular tools to determine the community composition of this the biofilm on plastics from the North Atlantic that they collected from the surface of North Atlantic waters. And they called this biofilm the plastisphere. And the main things they they saw when in this study was first of all that the plastisphere is composed by a diverse community of prokaryotes and eukaryotes, that the prokaryotic community on, of the plastosphere was different from the one in the seawater, which is not very surprising because we, as I said before, not all, as only some organisms like to attach and live on biofilms. So not all organisms that come that are in the seawater will participate in the creation of the biofilm or just are not components of the biofilm. So this is not surprising. Uh, it's common for any biofilm 
the community is usually different than the one in the seawater. And furthermore, something which was uh, interesting is that there were some observable holes on the surface of the plastic. It's really hard to sometimes tell whether this is the plastic surface or just another part of the biofilm, but it was very interesting. There was, you could st still see these holes that seemed to have the shape of the organisms that were in them. So there's not much you can conclude from that, but it's still interesting to keep in mind. And since this study, uh, there have been many studies trying to understand how this plastosphere affects the fate of plastics in marine environments. And me and part of my PhD is also uh, referring to, also was trying to look at this. And uh, one, the, one of the first things we need to understand before reaching a conclusion on how the plastosphere is affecting the plastic in the ocean is understand what are the factors that influence this community, their, its development and a, their, its structure. And it seems like it's not that simple. It's not like one or two factors that just affect the communities everywhere the same. Uh, usually like any other community, it's a fact affected by a complex network of factors. These are just some of the suggested ones. We know, for example, that geography uh, is an important one. By this, I mean organism, uh, plastics collected from different water masses have biofilms or have plastospheres with different communities. Uh, this is also not very surprising because different water masses have different properties, different characteristics, different pH, temperature, nutrient availability, chemical composition, and so on, that usually affect any community. So not only the ones on the biofilm, but also in the seawater. So it's not very surprising that there is that different plastospheres from different locations have different communities. But we, for example, uh, in one of the projects of my PhD was trying to exactly to see if this was true. The, I had samples, plastic samples from these stations in the North Atlantic, North Pacific Ocean, North and Adriatic here off the coast of Hovin. And we did see that, for example, the plastosphere of plastics collected in two, these two stations were relatively similar to each other, but then different from these two, and these two were relatively similar to each other. And that's because here you have one water mass and here you have another water mass with different characteristics. And the same for here in the North Atlantic, this one, which was coastal, had a very different uh, plastosphere than the ones that were not so coastal anymore and you could see a gradual change of plastosphere which further off from the coast you were. So that even though it's not surprising it is still something that now we know and um, that has been shown several times with other studies as well. One, uh, The next thing which I also try to focus a little bit on my PhD is how does the plastic itself influence the plastosphere because geography and every parameter that varies depending on geography and water mass is known to also influence other biofilms and other microbial communities but is plastic different is the plastosphere different from other biofilms and is the plastosphere between different plastic types different or do all plastics have the same community uh, is our plastic additives somehow influencing the plastosphere or and are the plastics degradable? These are all questions that we have been trying to answer and that I also dwelled into a little bit in my PhD. And so I just want to plug in a part of my project that is related to that in which we try to understand if different plastic types that were incubated for the same amount of time in the same location developed different plastospheres or if they were all the same. We also then had a glass control um, 
where to see if the glass and the plastics actually have the same communities. So I just want to show you here a short clip to show you this experiment. This was off the coast of Hovin in the Northern Adriatic. We had all these different plastics. This is me and my uh, my colleague Teresa, and uh, we were after one week one month and two months of incubation we would go out here and collect the plastics and then via molecular tools we try to characterize the different communities of the different plastic types that were living attached to the plastic types i can tell you that immediately after one week there was already a visible biofilm created so the biofilm establishes quite fast and the different plastics we studied were these ones here, so high and low density polyethylene, polypropylene, and then two PVCs, this polyvinyl chloride, one which had the additive of DEHP and one which it didn't have DHP, instead had DINP. And then also the glass control to see if it had different communities from yeah, the plastics. So this, this, the results of this study is or are already published um, in PLUS ONE. And the main findings were, which are the most interesting findings from the study is that the communities of the two PVC, of the PVC seem to be relatively similar to each other, but different from these other four surfaces. So the glass and the polyethylenes and polypropylenes. And on, on the other hand, these four seem to be very similar to each other. Now, it's very important and worth noting that PVCs are the plastics that usually have the highest amount of additives. For example, the ones that we used in our study had up to 40% of their weight was additive. So in the PVC DEHP, up to 40% of the plastic was DEHP. And why we cannot say for sure that that was the reason for why the, the community on these plastics was so different from the ones on these plastics, it's still an indication and it's still something worth looking for in the future. Even though these were similar and these were similar, there were always certain species that preferred apparently to attach to certain plastic types over the entirety of our incubation and the highest difference between plastic or between communities between plastospheres of the different surfaces was in the beginning so after one week of incubation and that is not necessarily surprising either because in the beginning is when the organisms that are attaching are in direct physical contact with the surface. Therefore, if the surface is somehow influencing the community attachment, then it, it will be this influence will be stronger earlier on than later on when the biofilm is thicker and the organisms that are newcomers are not so much in direct contact with the surface. There are, and so this is very interesting and it answers the question of whether or not certain different plastics can have different plastospheres. We see that yes, in this specific case at least, because there are other studies performed in other parts of, in other water masses with other plastics in which they don't see the same pattern. So it appears that this, the plastosphere is only specific for certain plastic types under certain conditions. And so this is something that we still have to research further on to understand because apparently the plastosphere is only specific for certain plastic types sometimes under certain conditions and we are still trying to figure out when and why something very important that i did forget to mention is that in this study we only looked at the prokaryotic component of the plastosphere which means the uh, archaea and bacteria and we didn't really look at the eukaryotes so this could change the results that we obtained for the prokaryotic community could change if we would look at the eukaryotic community. And it has been shown in other studies that they do not necessarily, that sometimes the prokaryotic communities are very similar, but the eukaryotic communities are different between different plastic types. 
So um, I just wanted to leave you here with uh, uh, end this presentation with this figure which really shows the complexity of this topic. I just talked to you a little uh, about a very small part of the interaction between microorganisms and plastics, but this is something that uh, we and this who uh, people who are studying this are really trying to figure out how plastics and their attached communities interact with the environment and the fauna and flora that lives around them. So I hope that you enjoyed a little bit of diving a bit into the world of plastic pollution in the ocean and microorganisms. I want to thank, uh, of course, my group. And again, I want to thank the International Microorganism Day for inviting me and allowing me to do this presentation and showing you all this that I just showed you. And I want to thank my funding agencies, my, the university and uh, the, Hudor, uh, the Institute of Hudor Boskovic in uh, Croatia for being our partner. And I want to thank you for watching this please feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. And thank you very much for watching.